this is this is this is what Clio's Euro Series is all about: close racing, very very precise movements. You you can't afford to slide, slip up, drop a wheel. These cars have very low power, and these drivers here are showing. Oh, he gets in the oh, no, contact there. Oh, oh, Callan, come on, you can't do that to me. Yeah, I don't need to have a heart attack at 26. Virtual Clio Series had some of a rebirth in its second season. Its first campaign enjoyed mild success, but without the aid of live broadcast, the series suffered from low fanfare and thus played a backseat to some of TPS's other offerings. So when it was announced Season 2 would be picked up by Multi BC, the championship saw a swell of signups. By the time Round 1 arrived, it was clear the series had been reborn. I'm very excited to see this as they rev up. They're revving up, the lights are away. Jack Keithley gets off the line, he's a little bit slow. Down the inside, William Lebec is looking to take the lead in turn one. He's a bunch of following, he's losing the outside. Ryan Collins is able to assume the lead in the opening few laps, but he's got Rayno Room, Gary Lennon, William Levike, and Jack Keithley all chasing him down in what would soon turn into an epic struggle for the win. that saw multiple star drivers head off track, including the two GT Omega races, Ryan Collin was barely able to hold on to his lead from the likes of Lennon and Levike. The three would swap position for the remainder of the race until Levike made a decisive overtake on Gary Lennon. From there, the French Canadian would take his first ever BCS race win. Race two would see much of the same type of action, but Chris Butcher would claim the victory, recovering from his DNF in race one. I see it as the stepping ground to the other TPS leagues. It's where a rookie will be able will be able to make a name for himself. But it's also a championship where there is a lot of hard racing. Well, I think it's the fact that we are driving around in small underpowered front wheel driven cars that pretty much ne negates the skill difference between the aliens and us humans. And you can see a guy like, like me were usually a backmarker in other TPS leagues, out qualify someone like Florian Strauss or Toby Davis. I think that's exactly, no, it's exactly this shot of glory by your average Joe that makes the virtual clues so popular and competitive. After the success of the round one broadcast, virtual Clio series became an overnight hit. Its YouTube videos quickly became some of the most viewed on the TPS channel. But on track, William Levike continued his blitz at the title, winning the next two races at Autumn Ring. 
Heading into round three at Thruxton, he had massed a 19 point lead on second placement Ryan Collin, with Chris Bridger holding on to third overall in the standings. But one thing was for certain, if there would be a challenger that emerged of Lebec's championship hopes, he'd have to stake his claim at Thruxton. Round, where are we at? This, let's get up to the front of the grid here. There's Chris Butcher, Florian Shows, Tom Ely, Ryan Callen from Paul. The lights are gonna be going out. Ryan Callen and Chris Butcher did what they needed while qualifying William the bike. But with Tom Ely starting on the front row, it gave the two championship hopefuls a new face to deal with. One that would prove difficult to conquer. All the As Colin broke away, it would be Tom Mealy, Toby Davis, Chris Butcher, Florian Strauss, and Avar Killamies that would fight over the second position. But as was the theme for the two Thruxton races, Florian Strauss and TPS Race would make a play for glory. Look at this, who's that there? Florian Strauss, our VA champion, trying to make a move by Toby Davis. Ryan Collin had captured the double win, firmly taking the battle back to Levike and THR. With the French Canadian Levike reeling from having his round ended in race two by teammate Chris Butcher, Collin had turned a 19 point championship deficit into a 19 point lead. Feeling confident about his pair of wins at Druxton, Collin immediately began psychological attacks against Levike through the media in an attempt to unnerve the young driver. Absolutely, it it was awesome to be on the grids. Even though I was at the back of the grids, it was awesome to be there, be racing with these great guys. I was annoyed. I was annoyed at the time. Yeah, definitely. Because I'm the, in the moment, in the heat of the battle, in the absolute heat of the battle. It's annoying. The controversy between Toby Davis, the THR co-boss, and the championship leader Ryan Conlon would cause such a rift that the usual ATCC commentating duo parted ways for a time, 
raising speculation about how bad the situation was. For round four at Verano, all eyes turned to virtual Clio series to the conclusion of the epic controversy, an event that would undoubtedly decide the outcome of the championship. And welcome to the fourth round of the Clio Euro Series put on by Touring Pro Series. very close to William Levesque as they drape through the two championship one and two are sitting bumper to bumper here the situation that every fan had tuned in to watch was developing Davis Butcher Levesque and Colin had all stacked up the four parties that play in the media Toby Davis made sure THR was prepared to answer the challenge TPS racing made at Thruxton as well as go to war with Colin himself what ensued would be forever remembered in the banks of TPS history. Follow along. Challenge. Oh, we should be able to get it. Oh, he's trying to get around. Challenge. Watch himself. Put it. Defend it hard. Now, he's going to make the wall wall, it looks like. Back to the climb on the car. Oh, okay, and so. And as, as we say that, really will back to the fast lap. When you've got three or four or five, you know, drivers, uh, by, by Calder Park and Sears Point, I was fighting five drivers by myself. I was fighting um, uh, Toby, William, Chris, Jesper, and Tom Ailey, pretty much all by myself. And they're all working, obviously, to get William his title, because he was obviously, the, you know, the, the guy who was going to win it for them. Frustrated by being suffocated by THR, Ryan Kahn decides to take to the offensive in just in time. As up ahead, Davis has allowed teammate and championship hopeful Chris Butcher into the lead, giving Colin his opportunity to strike.
the bike had done it. He had won the first race at Verano and would then go on to win race two, completing the third straight double win in as many rounds. But what Levike did goes beyond even that. Through the weeks of testing and turmoil, the French Canadian had kept his head cool. Aided by his THR teammates, Levike had sent a message to Colin and TPS Racing, one that THR wouldn't fold, no matter the pressure. Such a statement would later go on to unnerve Colin as the championship progressed, and the form Colin had shown at Thruxton was simply no more. It was here, at the twisty banks of Verano, that many feel the title was won. There was plenty of tension at that time. Uh, when you trail a car, usually you can say if the driver is uh, a bit more nervous than usual, because we all get a bit ner nervous when the race starts. But that was particularly obvious with Ryan's car. On, uh, I think it was Varano when he got ca caught up in that THR train and was very damaging to his confidence. I don't think that he actually recovered from that after this. I think it was very smart from uh, Toby's point to put up a really strong lineup. I don't think anybody, um, apart from um, maybe somebody like Stoffel Van Dorn, could have lived with William in, in that season. He was just so good in his tyres, it was, it was really, it was absolutely crazy.